Hey everyone, welcome back to Xvolt Tech. So, as of this year, Windows 7 will be turning 15 years old, and has also been unsupported by Microsoft for 4 years now. Despite its prolonged popularity, it seems that the release of Windows 11 in 2021 has killed off most of what was left of the Windows 7 user base. I'm curious to see how usable Windows 7 still is, despite the fact that there have been 4 new editions of Windows released between then and now. Web browsing is the most important use of a computer. By default, Windows 7 comes with Internet Explorer 7, which can be updated to Internet Explorer 11, which left support in June 2022. In the latest update release for Windows 7 on January 14, 2020, Microsoft Edge is installed onto the system by default. For other browsers, Firefox Extended Support Release 115.3.1 and Chrome version 109 are the latest to support Windows 7, with them last being updated on September 28, 2023 and January 10, 2023 respectively. In all of my previous videos on obsolete operating systems, Firefox supporting the operating system longer than Chrome has been a running theme, as Chrome decided its last day of support to be the same day that Microsoft dropped support for Windows 8.1 and Firefox only stopped supporting Windows 7 just over six months ago. In March 2024, this really isn't that bad, but as time goes on, expiring certificates and unsupported websites will soon become a problem. Probably not for another five to 10 years though. When I say stuff like productivity, I mean stuff like Microsoft Office. Microsoft officially ended support for Office 365 on Windows 7 in January 2023, which means you can still use 365, but without any security updates. If you don't have 365, any version of Office will work up until Office 2016. Office 2019 is not supported. Of course, the Google Suite works, but that's because it's web browser based. I like to use some Adobe apps myself, and I'm sure some of you do too. I'll be looking at the three most popular Adobe apps, Animate, Photoshop, and Premiere. The latest versions of each app actually is oddly inconsistent, as the latest versions that are supported are Animate 2019, Photoshop 2020, and Premiere 2018. Most of the CC versions tend to be the same, so as long as the essential features you need are in versions as early as 2013, you can likely still use that. Communication is essential to survive. So what do you do? I'd expect nearly every web-based messaging service to continue working on Windows 7 for quite a while, especially since the latest release of Firefox is still very new. Discord, an app that I use often, still lists Windows 7 as one of its minimum requirements for the app itself, so that will probably stick around for quite a while. However, once the app does go out of support, you can still use the web-based version for quite a few years. Pretty much most music apps will work on Windows 7, such as iTunes, Spotify, or Pandora. Apple Music, however, does not support Windows 7. It requires Windows 10, so you would have to use the browser version instead. Windows 7, including Windows Vista, comes with Windows Media Center, which basically houses all of your movies, music, TV shows, pictures, and videos in a singular app in a very nice and easy to use interface. Windows 7 is one of the centerpieces of the Frutiger Arrow aesthetic that's been taking the internet by storm over the past few years. Although Windows Vista also shares the exact same design language as Windows 7, Vista is overshadowed by its newer edition in nearly every way. With its release in 2009, Windows 7's design is ingrained in the childhoods of much of Generation Z, where Windows 7 may have been their first ever experience using a computer. Some say that the way Aero was executed in Windows 7 makes Windows 7 perhaps the most iconic and the best design of any version of Windows, with lots of themes and videos dedicated to making newer versions of Windows function and look just like Windows 7. What sets Windows 7 apart from Windows 8.1, 10, and 11 is that this was a time before Microsoft began collecting lots of telemetry on its users. 
There was no need for Microsoft to include privacy opt-outs in Windows 7, nor did it require you to sign into a Microsoft account or bug you every five minutes to do so. These privacy opt-outs and Microsoft accounts were not introduced until the release of Windows 8 in 2012. Many, critic, many critics of newer Windows versions list these reasons as to why Windows 7 has been the best version of Windows and also why it is the last free edition of Windows. Thanks for watching.